Hey everybody. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see. I think I've got everything set up and working well. I see eight people are already on. So it's early, but uh, this way it gives everybody a chance to get everything set up and kind of gives me a chance to get into the groove. So, okay. Uh, while we're waiting for everybody else to join, and we'll go ahead and start this at uh, 9, um, let's go over a few things. <laughs> I have a completely new setup. I'm, I'm pretty happy about it. I have an excellent, excellent camera. You're going to really like it. Everything's really crisp and clear, and I can zoom in and out. Um, I'm having to remember a, a few things when I zoom in, like putting it on manual so it doesn't try to focus on my hand when I go to gather paint. But other than that, I'm, I'm just really excited. So it's, it's, it's working really good. Uh, let me just go over a few things. And this will also help anybody that hasn't watched any of my tutorials yet. If you just want to get ready, of course you can skip over this, but it's also good because it's going to be in the replay. So paper, it is so important that you pick good paper. Please don't be painting on cheap paper. It's just going to cause you nothing but problems. So I am painting this on 300 pound Arches bright white paper. That 300 pound is going to help so that paper doesn't buckle and it really gives it a chance to really sink in. And I can scrub. It's just really tough paper and I can do a lot of things with it. So, and then taping uh, your paper down is really important. This is actually a gator board. You can see that it's pretty thick. It's got foam in the middle and then some sort of hard substrate like a melamine but um, it's really light and you can tape it down and it just lasts forever. I've, obviously, you can tell I've, I've had some of these boards for years. They're, they're relatively inexpensive, but it, it's just a good support. It won't bend when you add a lot of water. So I, I really like the gator boards. And then I, I tape everything down. And then along the back edge, I roll a tube of um, just you know, like masking tape and I put that on the back side and I have videos on all this if you haven't seen that before. And then I just press it down and then tape along the outside. Now I ran out of my white uh, artist tape but mm, it doesn't really matter whether you use, I use masking fluid a lot and or masking fluid. <laughs> I've used masking tape a lot and I've never had it rip the paper when I am pulling it off. Uh, the one thing you shouldn't use is blue tape. Don't, don't use a colored tape. That's really gonna affect how you see the color, so please don't do that. Uh, let's see, and if you didn't mask anything or watch the video, don't worry about it, especially if you're just gonna watch, then go back and watch the replay. You can mask it later. Um, I masked out, as you can see, the cactus needles and some areas of those little fine stamens and pistols at the end of the stamens. Um, but I have lots of workarounds for that. So when we get to that part, we'll go over that. Uh, let's see. Um, let me make sure. Looks like my sound is going good. Hopefully everything's hearing, everybody's hearing me okay. Uh, it looks like my sound's good. Uh, let's see. Oh, color wheel recipe card. What I did this time, and please, I really hope that you do a color wheel recipe card. It's just so important. Here's obviously my start. And then um, the reason why I did it first was so that we can concentrate on mixing those colors that we're going to see in the, um, in the tutorial. Um, one of the reasons why I think it's so important, I just have having to peek around and look at, look at the time. <laughs> I have my little camera, it's actually coming down. It's kind of hiding my time. Uh, so one of the reasons why I think it's so important to do these color wheel recipe cards that I do is because it's, it's almost like a warm up, like when you warm up before you go running or you exercise. So I, I, 
pick my three colors. And of course, in this one, we're painting with the Nickel Azo Yellow, the PY150, the Quinacridone Magenta, the PR122, as our red, and the Ultramarine Blue PB29 as our blue. And uh, we'll go over that as soon as, as soon as nine o'clock, or I'm sorry, as soon as eight o'clock hits. And uh, we'll be able to mix those colors. And one of the reasons why I picked ultramarine blue instead of another color I use often, which is the phthalo blue, the green shade, is because I like the way ultramarine blue makes soft, subtle colors, especially on flowers. The quinacridone magenta is going to be so that it just helps us get those beautiful, soft, um, off-white and really kind of uh, cool yellows on the blossom. And then, of course, Nicolazzo yellow, that's always the yellow I use. It's just very transparent, very permanent, and it just makes rich glowing colors and nice dark values of the yellow in dark concentrations. So... Um, make I hope you have that printed out and you've been working on that and you'll go along with me to mix these colors just so important it's like anything it's like getting ready for when you bake you know you have a recipe and you follow that or cooking just whatever it is if you're a musician you have your music in front of you that you follow so I just think it's really important to do all these preparations beforehand uh, and then Last but not least, we will, I'm going to decide how we're going to start. I know I'm going to start with, with the actual cactus. To be honest, I've tried not to look at this too much because I want you to see what my thought process is as I paint. So that way you can kind of see me hemming and hawing and going, hmm, gosh, I, you know what? I just don't know. Here's what I think is going to be the best way that we start this this cactus blossom. So I see we've got um, more people that are coming on. Uh, and please keep in mind that, uh, oh yay, Diana, thank you. Everybody hears me fine, good. Um, so, uh, <laughs> I forgot what I was gonna say. <laughs> um, okay, so anyhow, um, please keep in mind that Try not to stress out too much. Yes, I'm obviously going to be painting faster than you. Yes, I've been painting a long time, but just remember, we're using three colors. I'm going to be going over every little step of the way. Uh, I, have, I will have a little corner where you're always gonna see my hand being able, or mixing the colors. So you're gonna see what I'm doing every step of the way. And if you don't feel like you can paint fast enough, just watch it and then you can go back and um, watch the replay. So I should say uh, good morning to everybody. And I think this is gonna be a lot of fun. In fact, I like this blossom so much that I actually may do it much bigger because it's just really so beautiful. Let me see what time it is. Okay, 7.50, we're good. We're still waiting. For more people to join so if anybody has any questions before we get started feel free to ask and in the meantime I'll just keep talking <laughs> and drinking my tea uh, hopefully if you've watched my videos before you have the colors that I'm using and if not don't stress about it Please remember, and I say this a lot, and I repeat it over and over again, uh, you can mess up, or let me rephrase those words, you cannot have a good composition. You can pick terrible colors, colors that don't harmonize well, opaque, mixing it up with transparent, and honestly, the most important thing always remember this when you're painting, it's value that really counts. Value is what gives your painting structure. It's what makes you stop, whether you're looking online, whether you're at an art show, and what draws your eye, for me, to a painting is because you see that, those startling, say, dark colors, and then you see the bright whites, 
paintings that are really flat, you just, you know, you're, it, there's nothing that draws your eye to that. So if I have to say what is the most important thing when you're painting, and I'm going to keep repeating this as, as we're painting, is getting good value structures. I've actually taken students' paintings and, you know, just people that follow me and, and they just, they're having trouble, they're struggling with a painting, and I'll usually quickly take it, pop it into Facebook, and just, all I usually do is just adjust those values, and my goodness, you'd be surprised how it really makes uh, the difference in a painting. So, you know, you might get stuck, uh, you might be wondering, am I done? And if you're having a problem, that's usually what it is. It's usually the value. So please don't give up. Please don't feel like you've made a mess of your painting. Almost always those paintings can be, uh, they can be fixed just by adjusting your values, just by darkening some colors. So uh, let's see, what time is it? 7.53, so we're so good. And Teresa says, hi. Morning, Teresa. And again, if anybody has any questions, um, feel free to just ask. I will do my best as we are painting along to stop every once in a while and look and answer some questions. Maybe eventually <laughs> I can get an assistant and I'm crossing my fingers that if Shannon joins this morning that she'll kind of help out a little bit. She's really good about, she knows she knows the, uh, the thing, the steps that I follow and she's really good about helping out to answer questions. So sometimes I, I miss questions and uh, somebody else is saying hello, Raul. Hopefully, Roel. Hopefully, I said that's good. Well, <laughs> correctly. Good morning. Uh, yeah. So, um, I just think this is going to be a lot of fun. And even though looking at the middle of that flower, it may look a little bit scary. I have lots of things that we're going to do to. Um, if you have problems to fix it and uh oh okay so hi i'm belinda not richard good morning good morning belinda i'll try to remember that <laughs> so uh yeah this is going to be a lot of fun so i'm i'm glad everybody's joining me um and again hopefully uh you've got your um color wheel recipe card uh printed out and you've maybe already done it, but again, I've already done some of it, just to save a little bit of time this morning. And I'm gonna show you um, how I'm going to mix those colors and uh, what we're gonna do for the background greens and the cactus blossom, because it's just such a lovely, like very, very light yellowish white almost. So I'm kind of excited to start that part of it. So uh, Paula, Deb, I'm over in Pine Top. Oh, nice. Hopefully your weather's getting really nice like, our, like ours is. It's um, very cool mornings now. So that's kind of nice. And Jean, good morning. And Sherry, oh, hi from Alliston, Ontario. Wow. And Roel is watching from India. My goodness, huh, what time is it over there? It's probably like in the middle of the night. So. Okay, so I'm oh, glad to see everybody here. And um, I just want to say one more thing. Sometimes as I'm talking and painting, I might pause. Well, because again, not only am I having to monitor my screen, make sure I still have a good connection, making sure every, you can see everything. So sometimes having to remember all that, it's like I kind of forget what I'm saying or I forget the names of colors. So um, please just uh, <laughs> be patient with me. Oh, I know what I was going to say earlier. Uh, maybe eventually I'll be able to get an assistant if I didn't already say that. It sure would be nice so that I could just concentrate on the painting and not have to think about a million things at once. So please, please uh, be forgiving. And uh, let's see who else is joining. Um, let's see, Linda, she lives near San Antonio. Ah, oh, nice. Uh, my 
uh, stepdaughter and her husband are moving there. Her husband's stationed in the Air Force, so they're going to be moving to San Antonio in like another week or so. So, oh, I know my husband's really going to miss her, but I, I like San Antonio. It's a really nice place. So, oh my gosh, Francesca, hi from Rome. Whoa, that's crazy. Hope you're having nice weather over there. Okay, so I am going to, let's go down to my new camera and I am going to show you what I've done. Uh, okay, so I have my Nicolazzo yellow. In fact, let me, let me move that around a little bit. Oh, let's see, we've got Linda from Medicine Hat, oh, Loretta, I'm sorry, from Medicine Hat, Alberta. Hello, Loretta. <laughs> nice that you're joining us. Okay, so what I did was I first put in my Nicolazzo yellow. Then I put in my quinacridone magenta, the PR122. That Nicolazzo yellow, again, is PY150. And my ultramarine blue, the PB29. Now, please keep in mind that I almost always use uh, three colors. Very, very rarely do I use any more than that. Um... And this is just a good way to learn because instead of having that huge palette with 30 colors, you're just concentrating on the three colors. And if you look at my paintings, you know it's totally doable and you can make beautiful glowing uh, paintings with just these colors. So then I took the Nicolazzo yellow and my Quinacridone magenta and I mixed a red orange, an orange and a yellow orange. And I did the same thing over here. I mixed a green and then between the green and the yellow, I mixed a yellow green. And then between the green and the ultramarine blue, I mixed up a blue green. And the same across from the yellow. Uh, I mixed up a violet. And then between the quin magenta and the violet, I got a really beautiful red violet. And then between the blue and the violet, I got a great blue violet. So now what I'm going to do, and you can see my palette over here. I am going, and here's the drawing. I'm going to keep this on here. I want to mix colors that I see in the image. So, and for some reason, now I'm looking at the top there. I don't know what happened to... Um, I had... Ah, that is so weird. I had uh, up at the top the cactus drawing so I'm gonna add that give me a sec here I'm gonna add that back in but you really should uh, you really should have the image either printed out or on another screen it uh, it will really it makes a big difference in trying to look at it from the bottom or from on this screen that is just so hard so let me Scrunch this down a little bit and put it back up in this little corner here. I'm really proud of myself for not panicking and doing that so calmly. <laughs> okay, let's see. So my palette and we've got the image up at the top there. So what I'm going to do now, I have my colors. I need to actually squeeze out some fresh colors. Those dried from last night when I'm doing this. So right on top, I'm just going to squeeze out some fresh magenta. Some yellow and the ultramarine blue. And if anybody's wondering, the ultramarine blue. Now, please keep in mind that all these are actually on uh, the sheets on my um, the download underneath the uh, intro video on the course card. So my ultramarine blue is M gram, and so is my Nicolazzo yellow. My quinacridone magenta is Winsor & Newton because for some reason, M gram does not make a single pigment PR122. Not sure why, hopefully they will eventually. Now, one of the reasons why I have put out clean color is because, and I know people struggle with this, 
It is very, very difficult to mix a really dark value if you aren't starting with fresh color. So I'm wetting my brush, and as I look at that image, I'm, I wanna try to see if I can't get in some of these greens that I'm seeing. So, and for some reason, I'm getting a little bit of a delay here and there, and I have an excellent connection. Okay, so, well, that might be something I have to work on later. Okay, so let's, let's work on, I'm gonna grab some of that fresh yellow I've got, and I'm gonna put it right there. I'm gonna rinse my brush. I have a second uh, container to rinse my brush so I don't dirty up my water too much. Um, and again, I'm gonna add a little bit of that blue. That was kind of a lot of blue. So I'm gonna add a little bit more yellow. Let's see, and I'm gonna put it right here. Let me zoom in a little bit on that. Oh, I love this. I love that I get to zoom in. And zoom back out a little bit. That may have been too close. See how close I can get? It's, it's pretty crazy. Um, okay. So let's see how close that looks to that cactus, that back, those greens. And I'm gonna back up a little bit more because you're getting a lot of the, the glare. That's a little bit better. Okay, so it, that, that cactus is pretty yellow green. So right on that paper, I'm just gonna throw in a little bit of that yellow. And now I'm kind of getting a lot closer to what to what that cactus is. So now I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna think a, a bit and I'm gonna go, okay, I was, that was a good choice that I had using that ultramarine blue and my Nicolazzo yellow. It, it, it's made a really good, not so saturated green like I would have had if I would have used the phthalo blue. So I'm okay with that and if I add a little bit of water, I can even lighten it up a little bit. So I'm pretty happy with how uh, that with that green and how it's going to match that cactus pretty well. But one thing I need to do now is obviously if you look up at that cactus, you can see we've got some really, really, really dark, dark values, almost black. How am I going to do this? Okay, so I've already taken the blue and the yellow. I've made. I've made green. So if any of you have not watched this before, you know that three primary colors together mixed in technically equal amounts will make a really, really dark value. So I'm gonna make I'm gonna make my green, take some of that blue, some of that yellow, and I'm making a little bit darker. So let's see what happens. That's pretty nice we've got a darker value of this green, but it's still not a dark, dark, dark color. So I need to make this even darker. So how am I gonna do that? I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna grab some of that red and I'm gonna add it in there. And I may have to, I may have to adjust. I need to add a little bit more blue in there because it was a little bit on the red side. I'm gonna add a little bit more blue. Now I've got a super, super dark value. So now let's see what happens. I'm trying to hold it up a little bit so we don't get the glare from my lights. And look at how gorgeous that is in dark. So without using black, I've gotten a beautiful, beautiful dark value. All with those three colors and without using black. Now let's say Right underneath that flower, in that upper part of the cactus, I'm seeing a little bit more of, of a reddish kind of a, a dark value. So what I can do, pick up a little bit of red, and I can throw that in there. And now look what it did. 
It got even darker, but it changed that value from that really dark bluish black to more of a reddish black. And that is the secret to making your shadows look alive instead of with Payne's gray or Mars black. And then you just get this flat, flat color. But when you mix your three colors together to create your dark values, you just see that it just, everything kind of comes alive. So now you can see I've made an even darker version than that yellow. And, and I, hate, I hate to say it this way, for lack of a better term, that's really all it is. It's just making sure that you're taking different combinations of these three colors and you're mixing them to create dark values and using it to change yellow just like over here how we have, you know, our different oranges and yellows and just, just with those three colors. So I'm pretty happy at how that, that looks. I feel like we've got beautiful dark values. And if I look over at that cactus, now I know, before I've even started painting, I know that these colors are gonna work. That's why planning ahead is so important. That's why making, and let me zoom out here a minute. And that's why mixing a color wheel is so very important. You're, you're making a recipe, you're planning, let me move that over a little bit, there we go. You're planning how your painting's gonna go. Instead of taking, you know, a, a palette with 30 colors and just winging it, saying, huh, okay. <laughs> Let me see what colors I'm going to work. It stops having a lot of frustration and it's it's just such a good idea to do. You just really learn a lot about how your colors are going to play well together, what you're going to be able to do. And at that point, you may find that you might want to change out your red or change out your ultramarine blue. Uh, you may want to go to the phthalo blue, or you may want to go to a quinacridone rose. But at least planning and preparing in this way stops you from getting a painting started and then having to rip the whole thing up and start over. So that's why it's just so very important to do this. Now let's see if we can mix that beautiful color that we see on that those petals. This time what I'm going to do is I'm going to just wet it. I'm just wetting that area a little bit. And I'm going to take a little bit of my yellow and off to the side. I'm just going to grab some of some of that color that I made over here. Cuz it already has the red and the blue in it. And then I'm going to really make it thin. Now I'm going to drop some in here and I'm going to see what I think about that color. And let's zoom in a little bit more. Let's lean it over a little bit so we don't have such a reflection from the water. And I've really made a beautiful dulled down yellow versus this kind of a yellow. So all because I took that yellow and then I just grabbed a tiny, tiny bit of that already mixed color. Now let's say, let me add a little bit more. Let's say I need to get it a little bit cooler where we see some of those grayish shadows. So what I'm gonna do is I just picked up some of that bluish gray over there and I added a little bit in there. And let's see, back with a little bit more yellow, back with a little bit of that blue. I'm gonna pick up some more blue just for my blue. I'm just gonna keep playing around. And I'm gonna add a little bit more blue. And I'm gonna add a little bit more from this area and see what that does, aha. And there I've got and maybe a little bit more yellow. And I feel like I'm gonna be able to, 
spilled some really beautiful shadows right on that petal. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Now let's see what happens when I grab a little bit of yellow, a little bit more yellow. Because if you look carefully at that blossom, you're going to see all different kinds of shades in those shadows. I'm going to add a little bit of red because I'm looking at it and I see some redder areas. I'm going to come over here and just pick up different colors here and there. And already I'm seeing I'm making some absolutely beautiful, beautiful values in there. Might need to know, go a little bit darker in some of those shadow areas. And look what happened when I added some red to that. So just by picking up red or blue or a little bit of green, it's changing everything. Now, you cannot do this <laughs> over and over with opaque colors. Pretty soon they start muddying and they start lifting and you have a lot of problems with them. Um, and that is why I use transparent staining colors because I can keep going over and over an area and I don't have to worry about it getting muddy and um, or lifting because I know that it's sinking right down into the paper and I can go over and over and over it. Yet I can still use my scrubber brushes to pick up little areas of white, which is what we will be doing when I start painting, which is going to be here in just a minute. So hopefully everybody got that. I'm going to adjust my lighting a little bit here and maybe there. There we go. That's a little bit better. I think we can see it better. Okay. I think that's good. All right. So that is pretty much it for the colors. The only thing I can really see that I need to add some more of is when you look under that uh, blossom, you can see that there are a couple of petals that are really, really, really brown, almost like uh, burnt sienna. So let's go ahead then and mix up a burnt sienna. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my quinacridone magenta and I'm gonna take a little bit of that yellow and I'm gonna make an orange. Basically burnt sienna is a very, very dulled down orange. I might even wanna get a little bit more red in that, make it a real red orange. Maybe a little bit more yellow. All right, so how are we gonna turn that into burnt sienna? I'm gonna go over and grab just a hair of that blue, just a tiny bit. And I'm gonna drop it in there. And you can already see that that dulled down that, that orange. And I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit more yellow. And I'm gonna add a little bit more blue. Now, it may be that you might have to do this a couple of times because learning to mix colors can be hard until you, you know, are able to judge the strength of, of each paint. And that's why it's so important to paint with a limited palette too because then you start learning how your colors react with each other. Now see, added too much red. Now I'm going to go back to adding yellow. Now I'm going to add just a touch again, more, more of that blue, and let's see what happens. Ta-da! Burnt Sienna. I could have actually made it a little bit thicker. Now at this point, if I wanted to, while it's on the paper, okay, now I've added some red. Now I'm going to come over here and add a tiny bit of that blue. Now I'm going to come and add some yellow. And there it made it a little bit darker. And that's all it is. And that's going to be a color that we are going to see on that blossom. 
So I'm having, I don't know why, I haven't had this issue with my camera yet. I've noticed a couple of times it stopped. But when I go to, to do uh, my zoom on my uh, peony, I will be using a different uh, program. I'm using something called o OBS to link into YouTube. And this is the first time I've used it with my camera. So I'm not very happy with that. So I may switch over to um, what I use with Zoom. But anyhow, just I'm just letting you know that I am seeing that it's, it's paused a couple of times. Um, okay, so I think I'm happy with, uh, with the colors that I've mixed. And so I'm gonna go ahead and set this aside. And we are going to get started on, on the cactus. I'm gonna do the cactus first. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I have, obviously I did the masking fluid yesterday, so I'm not gonna to have to worry that it's dry enough. And if you can see this, I have the tip of the, of the petal cuts off. So I have a couple of different little areas of the, of the cactus. I have this area, then I have a little area right in here, and then I have that big back area. So what I am going to do is I'm gonna start with yellow. I'm going to use my number six silver white brush and I'm gonna wet this area. Now remember, when you're painting the background, keep to this side of, your, of the area that you're painting so that your lines are nice, nice and clean. And if any of you have watched when I do backgrounds, this is gonna be kind of similar, but obviously it's not really a background. It's the cat, it is behind the blossom, but it's not a background, but I still want to get, still want to get it nice and wet. And I'm going to turn it a little bit. Just so I can keep my brush to this side of those blossoms. I want those blossoms to be nice and sharp. If you have to, use a smaller brush to get into those little tight areas. Okay, flip it back around. Now I'm gonna grab some yellow. It's pretty thin, I'm adding quite a bit of water to that. Okay, give me a sec here, I forgot to I, it's, I, there's no way I can paint looking at that little tiny cactus up in the corner, so I actually have it on my screen really enlarged. I just had to pull it up. So I'm just dropping yellow in. I think I'm going to make that a little bit thicker. One thing you don't want to do when you're doing this first layer is you don't want to have an even, like you don't want to make it look like a solid yellow. Pick up some heavier yellow, some thicker yellow, and just drop, just drop it in here and there. Let me, let me zoom in a little bit on that. There we go. Just adding yellow pretty much over to the whole thing, but again, you can see that I'm just gonna let the yellow kind of blend out 
Again, I don't want a solid yellow. And then if you want, you can kind of lift it up and roll it around. So now I've got my yellow in there. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom back out. Okay, I'm gonna turn it a little bit. I'm just gonna do something with my hand here for a minute, make sure it's not adjusting the exposure. Okay, I'm good then. Let's see. Okay. Now this area is pretty small, so I've got a little bit of yellow on my brush. It's not gonna matter much, but I am going to switch to a number four so I can get in there a little bit easier. That's also a very, very dark area. So I can go ahead and add in a little bit more yellow closer by that petal. I'm gonna turn it again so that I can get this upper cactus. And I'm gonna go back to my bigger brush. And if you notice this time, because I'm not doing a background, I didn't worry about the color sinking in. It's not a background. Uh, I'm not gonna be doing really detailed layer after layer and scrubbing out. So I'm just not worrying about the color sinking in too much. It's sinking in but not like I would be if I was doing a background. Oh, I almost went over that petal. All right, now let's grab some yellow again. So as you're watching me, you're seeing that I'm putting a really thick layer of yellow right there, but that's a shadow area. So I'm okay with making that a little bit darker. Not to mention the fact that when we were making that yellow, as I was testing it, this whole background cactus does not have a lot of highlights. It's very dark valued, so keep that in mind when you're painting. Turn it back around. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so we can get that whole thing in there. There we go. As I'm looking at that image, I'm going to take a little bit of some thicker yellow right along this line up here, putting in some darker yellow. My board is still wet. Honestly, one of the reasons why I like starting with yellow is because it's very forgiving. It's a great way to start a painting. It's gonna be, you know, of course the bottom most layer and it's a light valued color. 
So you don't have to worry that you're going to add too much or too little. It's pretty forgiving. It's pretty wet down there still, so I was able to come back with some more yellow. And let's add. That was pretty dark. See how that yellow gets really dark in very strong concentrations? I love that about Nicolazzo yellow. You can see I'm really making that yellow thick there. This is actually a good time to add some thicker color because the water has really sunk down into the paper and it's just making everything blend out nicely. Oh, you see what I did? Darn it. That was actually a petal and I went right over it. Well, you know what? That's actually kind of good because that will give me an opportunity. You can already see what I've done. I've picked up some of the color and now I'm going to take my hair dryer and go over that so the color doesn't run back in there. Keep in mind that if you have masked your cactus, be careful and don't get too close with your hair dryer if you're going to dry it you, because you don't want to bake the uh, um, you don't want to bake the masking fluid in there. All right, let me stop for a minute. Gosh darn it. What is it with people in these scamming? Give me just a minute. <laughs> I want to get rid of these. That is very, very annoying. I'm so sorry about that. How awful that I had to stop to get rid of that. Ugh. All right, back to drawing.
it's almost dry, but this is actually a good way for you to kind of catch up, do what you uh, need to do. Oh, that's funny, Melissa. I do it all the time. Yeah, it happens to the best of us. <laughs> so now I'll have to fix that later, but you know what? That's okay. It'll work. We'll get it. Not the end of the world. I'd like to point out something really important when you are, um, when you're drying something, because the hair dryer is heating the paper and then you quit, you may think that it's dry because it feels warm. Give it a few seconds, let the paper cool off, and then feel it with the back of your fingers. If it's still cool, that means it hasn't dried all the way. And what will happen is you'll get these little fuzzy edges when you go to add more color. So make sure it is completely dry. Let's see, and Sherry asked, will we be able to view this later while we are working on our own painting? Absolutely, as soon as this live stream is ended, it turns into a replay. So yep, you'll be able to watch it anytime you want, just like all my other ones that are on YouTube. I'm gonna give that a few seconds and see how dry it is. So while I'm just waiting for that to cool off, so now if you look at it, just by adding that yellow in those darker areas, you can already see that I'm building value. So now what we're gonna do, and it's feeling pretty dry. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to mix up a nice amount of green and I'm gonna to try to keep little areas of yellow and blue and red so that we vary the colors in these green. So now I'm gonna to try to get that next value which is, if you look at the whole thing, it's really actually a dark, dullish green, really like what we've mixed right in the center here. I'm going to try to keep it out of my, uh, my yellow. Normally, when I paint myself, I use a bigger plate. I use a bigger plate than this Corel plate. And this really is the way to go, especially when you're learning color. Try to use a round, paint, a round palette. And these Corel plates, you know how cheap they are. You can get them at Walmart or Target, and they're a few bucks. They've gone up recently, but they're, they're still pretty affordable. Now that's pretty dark. That's because I threw some yellow in, or some red in. And I didn't, 
Honestly, I didn't really mean to throw that red in. I was talking and not thinking. So there you go. I'm going to wipe a big part of that out. Going to start over. <laughs> See, there you go. I don't always know what I'm doing. There we go. That's much better. Okay. I'm going to make sure there's plenty of yellow over there. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing now. Wetting it. Honestly, this is where a lot of beginners have trouble. And even if you aren't a beginner, if you're just struggling, ooh, I'm gonna have to be careful right there. I went into that petal a little bit. If you're struggling, it's usually because, again, value like I was talking about before, and you're not getting enough water on the paper in the initial layers. You really, really, really need to get that water into the paper. What it does is it allows the color to sink down so that when you put a new layer on, you're not lifting that color. Okay, so now let's see what happens when we add in that green. I'm gonna add even a little bit more yellow. That green is, ooh. too much yellow. <laughs> I'm off to a great start this morning. <laughs> See how beautiful it is when you when you're adding lots of water and those colors are kind of moving around and they're just all blending together. Again, you can see I'm adding in a lot of yellow. So even more yellow than what I initially put down because I'm these greens are very, very yellow. And look at how pretty that looks already. It's just everything's blending well. It doesn't look even. And that's the other thing. Make sure you get that water on that paper. It it will make sure that not everything is this solid green look. You don't want that. Very nice. I think I'm really happy with that. Actually, I think I'm going to pull some more yellow and some more blue over here. Here's what I'm noticing about this. There is definitely a little bit of like a very dull, almost like an olive green. And you remember from, let me grab it here, from what we did, I know, I wanna kind of get that, that color a little bit in some of these areas. So I'm gonna add just a little bit of red. And I'm gonna drop it right in this area. because that's where I'm seeing that, that red. And I'm sure that's a reflection off of those really beautiful lower petals. Ooh, wait till we do that one. That's gonna be so much fun. It's got a lot of yellow in it and that, that burnt sienna color. Okay, let's, let's get a little bit up in here. There we go. And I'm going to turn this. I'm 
now let's do this little area. I didn't put water down. If you've got really tiny areas like this, don't bother with the water. Just by picking up your brush and moving into different areas, you're going to go ahead and make some, some pretty nice blends. See how I kind of turned my brush to the side so that I could get right, right next to that edge and make it nice and clean. Normally when I paint, um, I move constantly. I'm constantly turning the painting around so that I can really get into tight areas and that I don't accidentally leave a rough edge on those petals. Okay, I did not have enough green mixed up, obviously. Okay. All right, now I'm definitely wetting all of this. I'm kind of staying away. Oh, I gotta remember. <laughs> remember to go around that petal. All right, got it. All right, I'm starting to get into the groove here. I guess that's also why it's so important to uh, do a color wheel. Check your colors. You know, it's like nobody just sprints off in a run. At least I hope you don't, you might injure yourself. But um, sometimes, even when I do that and I start painting, it takes me a little bit to get in a groove. I mean, you've seen some of my silly mistakes. Um, it just shows you that I would rather you see that I don't want you to see this edited version of me doing everything exactly right. You know, I want you to hear the, the thought processes that I'm going through and that I, I make mistakes. I'm actually gonna turn my image too that I'm looking at. So give me just a second here. All right. I think it's very intimidating, honestly, uh, when you watch some tutorials and the artist that's teaching, it's just so perfect. I'm like, yeah, I, I can't paint that way. <laughs> it, that can be extremely intimidating. It's just important that you see that I struggle. Sometimes I'll, I'll start a painting and I'll think, eh, this isn't turning out the way I thought, even with a lot of planning ahead. That doesn't happen often, but it does happen. Another nice thing about when you're painting with three colors is that if you didn't add enough of a color, at least you know the three colors that you were painting with. So you don't have to go back and try to remember exactly what you did to get that color. Basically, you know, those are the three colors and in some, whether it was more yellow, more of the blue or the red, you're gonna eventually get close to what you to what you painted, what you started with. Again, I'm picking up a little bit of that red. You know something else that is, it's really nice when you're painting with three colors is Instead of concentrating on what color do I use, you're instead figuring out, hmm, how do I get that color? So no one is saying that you have to stick with three colors, but my goodness, it's just a great way to learn how to mix, 
Uh, here, let's zoom this out. We can really see it. Oh, I better zoom back in. That was way too far. <laughs> All right. So this is really starting to look good. I'm really liking this. You can see that... Nope, wait a minute. Let me just make sure I've got this on manual. You can see that I really have started to get those dark values in some of these areas where we can see those shadows are. And you can see that there's going to be a really dark area there. Yet I've got some nice, beautiful light green yellows going on. I think this is getting, it's going to be, I think that this is going to turn out great. I really feel like I got exactly what I wanted in those greens. All from those three colors. Just a little bit here and a little bit there. So I'm going to have to stop and dry it again, but this will be a good time for me to stop and see what questions I've got. If anybody has any questions or if you're just going to work on catching up. So I'm going to go ahead and dry this.
Okay, while I'm waiting for that to cool off, let's see what Linda has to say. Debbie, we have a lot of cacti in San Antonio. Most in my area are a beautiful yellow. I would love to send you a photo. Ours, ours are thornless prickly pears. I would love it. Believe it or not, here up in central Arizona, prickly pear cactuses grow. But I would love to see it if you've got some beautiful um, photos and if anybody would like me to, like to send me some photos, I would love it. I'm always looking for good photos to paint from. So yeah, I'd love to, I would love to see them. Okay, so I'm feeling it and it feels, um, it's relatively, it's relatively dry. So I want to talk about now, um, what I what I want to do at this point. Now that I've got these two colors on here, I don't want to add a layer of water. Now I'm going to start trying to detail and get those darker values into those beautiful, gorgeous little areas where, you know, the, the cactus kind of folds in. So no water this time. It's just going to be wet on dry. So I'm gonna go over here and I am going to start mixing up and I'm already starting to run out of yellow. So let's, let's get some fresh yellow on there. That little area right there is dry. Really, if you want, if you want nice deep dark values, make sure that you are using um, fresh paint. It's so hard to re-wet colors And get them thick enough to get a really dark value. Okay, obviously I know that's too blue, so I added in a lot of yellow. You know, and if you're not sure, let me grab a little, you can rub it on a piece of scrap paper, so don't ever throw your scrap paper away uh, when you're painting. Let's see. See what happened when I added a little bit more of that red in? It just took that color and really darkened those values. And that really is the color that we're seeing in those ribs. Okay, now I'm gonna thin out some of those areas. I don't, I'm not sure how much I wanna put on first. So I'm gonna go ahead and start I'm going to thin it out a little bit more, adding a little bit more blue, adding a little bit more yellow. So I have kind of, let me scoot this over. All right, so I have some few different areas going on here. So I'm going to take this lighter, that lighter green mixture, probably add a little bit of more of that yellow. It's funny how as I'm painting along, there's just so much yellow. See how I put it on, wet on dry. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. Let's get it to focus. Let's zoom in a little bit more. Okay. So if you saw what I was doing, I was picking up from this side of the palette. Now I'm over here grabbing a little bit of yellow. Now I'm gonna go back over that area and see how already you can see that it's starting to dip in a little bit. Now, here's what's really neat. This is where you really start to see how important it is that you have staining colors and transparent colors. Do you notice how nothing lifted? I have my brush on there and absolutely nothing is lifting. They're staining and they're sinking right down into the paper. And just remember to let your mixes kind of, I mean, you can mix them, but try to let them blend together a little bit. And you know what, let me, let me adjust my, uh, if I can, <laughs> I'm going to adjust 
one of my lights so it's not glaring so much on that paint and that didn't really help a whole lot okay now there's nothing I can really do about that but you kind of get the idea so and then what you can do as you're as you're painting this little area so you can see that I can I can go you know what I want to add a little bit more yellow so I'm going to add some yellow right up here as long as you come back in make sure everything is the same uh, has the same water level on it you can look at it from the side you can put more color down like I just did in fact I think I want to add a little bit of blue now you may have heard that don't ever go back into an area that you've put water because you'll get a bloom very true but if you make sure that you look at it to the side and as you're putting more color more water just make sure that everything else has the same amount of water on it and then you will not get a blossom and there you go I think it actually needs to be a little bit darker right in here because remember it's gonna it's gonna dry a little bit lighter Trying to clean up that edge a little bit there. There we go. I think that's looking pretty good. So now let me scoot this over a little bit and now let's do that darker color right along this edge. And again, it's wet on dry. I'm going to pull in a little bit of red. I softened my brush with a little bit of water. And we've got these gorgeous little shadows. That are part of those spines. All right, I'm noticing I'm getting a tiny amount of little fuzzy lines. So I'm going, I didn't quite have it dry enough. So I'm going to look and see if there's any questions. And I'm going to go ahead and dry this a little bit more before I continue on.
Okay, I think that's a little bit, that's a little bit better. Give that a few seconds here. Uh, let's see, where am I going now? <laughs> okay, uh, let's see. Oh, Loretta, she has prickly pear cactus too in the barrel cactus. I just love them. They're just so, so sweet. Oh, and thank you for another free tutorial. You're very welcome. I had a little bit of a, uh, I'm not going to say rough start, but I'm starting to get into the groove here. <laughs> okay, so the same thing we're going to do right here. I'm going to grab a little bit of my color. I'm just going to leave that for now. Obviously, you can see we have, we're going to have more details to work in there. But I want to get this initial first layer on there. It's not as dark as I want that value to be. But I'll, I'll add more value later. And now I'm going to switch to a number two. I think it'd be easier to try to put in those little, the little tiny shadows. If you can really honestly try to get these in, I think they're going to make a difference. It's going to really help make those, those uh, needles come forward. Fix that edge a little bit more. I think that's what really makes a difference is those little shadows, which I didn't put in over here. So I'm going to come back over here and just add, add those little shadows. And you know what? Those shadows don't have to be perfect. Nobody's going to look and go, well, I don't know if that shadow is exactly at the correct... Uh, <laughs> angle where the sun is at so don't don't stress over that too much just get some of them in it'll make a huge difference okay, I'm gonna stop for just a sec let's see oh thank you Linda uh, yeah I'm trying I'm trying to do a good job and Diana says calf shadows definitely add to the realism of the painting absolutely it makes a huge difference and Loretta asks how many layers do you typically add to your painting ah uh, boy that's kind of a tough one it just kind of depends on how deep and dark some of the shadows are how much detail I'm going to have um, I just kind of play it by ear as I'm painting all right let's go ahead I'm just gonna stick with my number two Let's go ahead and add in some, uh, do the shadow right here. Now, keep in mind that that shadow doesn't go all the way to, the, to that edge. See, I really should have a little bit more red in the shadow, and it's definitely not quite dark enough yet, but I'm going to get to that. Now the shadow does go all the way out to this area.
it's amazing with what just a few shadows can do. Somehow, let's see. Wait, oh, 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 wait. So now we go under here. Okay. Got a little lost right here. Now here's what I'm seeing with this shadow right in here. There's a lot of red and that's being reflected from something in these petals. So I put, hmm, okay. I added a little bit of red right on there. That little area right there is actually a really, really dark petal. I like it. I think it's looking really good. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it upside down again. Oop, I'm going to go back to a number four. There's a big area right here. You know, let me dry that a little bit more. But before I do, um, I just really want to say you can already see how that value is just really starting to bring out that cactus. But that really still isn't even enough. And we'll have to even adjust in the greens, maybe up the saturation a little bit, brighten it a little bit. So as I'm, as I'm going through this, I'm looking and seeing things that I'm going to need to adjust. That was taking forever to dry or to dry and we don't even have a lot of humidity right now so I'm pretty surprised about that let's see okay I actually have my number six I'm not sure if I've got enough shadow but I think I do now, I've noticed in this area, I'm seeing a lot of red in there, and I just polluted a little bit of my red. So I'm going to, there we go. This is a good example of why um, paying attention to what colors are in your shadows is so important. 
You don't want all your shadows looking exactly the same. If you have a hard time uh, with um, lines when you add color, just um, wet that area that the shadow's in and then go ahead and add, add your shadow. I'm having trouble with my number six. I'm gonna go back to the number four. I think I'll feel a little bit more comfortable with that. Just trying to add a little bit more of that shadow color. After a while too, you'll start seeing What strengths those colors are? Like how strong is your blue? Do you usually have to add just a little bit of it? A lot? You'll notice that yellow kind of pushes other colors away. All right, now I'm gonna to go to my number two so I can make those shadow lines. I'm going to lighten that shadow up a little bit because there's a couple more right in here. It's right in this area. go back to my number four it might help if you uh, mix up a very large amount of your shadow colors I would keep going back and, and mixing them <laughs> Now 
Now this shadow is kind of blended out a little bit. So I just took a wet brush, hit my uh, paper towel a little bit, and just kind of blended that out some. And again, I'll have to be going back into that. So again, with a little bit of water, I'm just kind of blending all that out from very dark to kind of a, a little bit of a mid-tone there. And again, I'm probably have, gonna, gonna have to go back and adjust that. Back to a number two, Let me pick up some of that shadow color. Come in here and add some shadows there. Sometimes it helps if you start the shadow at the very point of the, the shadow and pull it down because you're trying to get these, these little needles. And usually what will happen is, oh, I'll show you on here. So if you're going to make, let me zoom in a little bit on this. So if you're going to, to be doing, and this is going to apply to the needles that we do. So I'm just going to set this down. So here's what happens. Let's say you're, whether this is the shadow or the needle. If you start at the base and you work your way forward and you lift it, you'll usually get a little round spot. So the better way to do it is to twirl your brush on your palette. Make sure you get a point. Start at the point. Okay, let's pretend that's the base, that's the point. And finish at the base. Let's see how that, let's see if I can zoom in just a little bit more. So here you can see that when I started this direction and went that way, as I lifted the brush, all the paint that's on the tip ends up dropping into that spot. When you start at the tip, work your way that way, you're pulling the paint down and away from that. So you're getting a nice sharp, sharp tip. So I'm going to be doing that as, as we start getting in those cactus needles. Okay, let me zoom back out a little bit. And let's go ahead and switch brushes back to my number four. And let's finish up the shadow right here. And again, what I did was I wet my brush and I'm just lightly with a damp brush, just blending that color out. So I added a little bit more shadow right there and now it's kind of blending that direction. Another thing I'm going to do, once I'm done with the cactus part, I'm going to go along with a really, really dark value and I'm going to really clean up those edges and make them nice and sharp. back to a number two. Rinse my brush. 
used my paper towel. My brush is pretty damp. That's just a tiny, tiny shadow. Now I have, I actually have quite a bit of water on my brush now. And just looking at it, I realized, you know, it's kind of really, it's a softer shadow, but it goes out quite a ways. So I just rinsed my brush, got a little bit of the water off of it, and now I'm just softening it and spreading it out that direction. My paper's still evenly wet. And I've noticed that I need to get a little bit more, more color over here. That's already pretty dry, so. It's all these little subtle changes that make a difference. You have to really pay attention. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it around again. So I'm gonna fix this little edge right here and soften that up. Let's turn it around. Now, as I'm looking, obviously, at, at the shadows now, we can see that we really need to darken some of these areas right up in here. but I'm gonna dry it first, and then I'm gonna go back and we'll start working on those shadows a little bit more. So Melissa, I'm going to pause here for a minute. Melissa asked a question, are all these shadows hard edge? Well, initially they are. I'm what I was trying to do was just get just get the base shadows in there. So now once I have this completely dry, now I can start doing all the subtle gradations and really start adding in some more of the color. Um just doing the fine details, and then I'll end up just softening those edges just a bit.
Okay, I'm gonna let it cool off. And one thing I'm gonna stop and do is I'm going to clean off these edges. I don't know why, it's just a peeve of mine. I just like my edges when I'm painting <laughs> to be nice and clean. May not matter to you. It just, for some reason, it helps me, it just helps me see it better. It's almost like it's a uh, matte that's helping you really see it much better. Nice and clean. Let's see. So every once in a while, if I'm not paying good attention, I get some blobs here and there from the paint, and I will show you also how to fix those. Right now, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go grab some clean water. So I will be right back. All right, I got some nice clean water. All right, I think this is starting to look pretty good. We're starting to build the values up. Okay, it feels pretty cool, or feels pretty warm. So what I think I'm gonna do, and this is gonna help me judge all the other values. Now, remember, I, I, keep, I keep talking about values, but what I really want to do is, there are some of these shadows obviously right along those edges, in this area especially, that's really, really dark. So I'm gonna focus on this by turning it around and starting to do all these darker values and the detail values. So let's turn this around. I'm going to zoom in up close so that you can really see what I'm doing here. Okay, now I'm gonna take my number six brush. I'm also gonna turn my image around. So now I'm going to really define those edges. And I'm gonna really have to clean this palette <laughs> when I'm done. Again, usually I have a bigger palette and it's easier that I don't end up um, polluting my other colors, but I'll clean it up after we get these shadows done. Okay, here's what I'm doing. I pulled in a lot of blue from this area, pulled in a lot of red, and now I'm pulling in that yellow. So I have all these dark values but I haven't quite mixed it all up. It's mixed a little bit, but not a lot. And this may seem weird, and I know this is a big area now, but instead of using this number six, I'm gonna go to my smaller number four. Actually, I'm going to use a number two also. Here's what I want to do. I want to get really up close 
and make sure I have nice, smooth, very, very smooth lines. And actually, I'm going to go even smaller. I'm going to go to my zero because there's all these beautiful little edges and I, I, I really want to capture those really cool little edges. And yes, I know I'm, I'm leaving those. I'm not too worried about it because it's going to be pretty dark. So I'm going to a two watt. Okay, that's nice. That edge is nice and clean. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here into that red area. Grab some water and kind of thin out some of that blue a little bit. Now some of that red. See how dark that's got gotten. <laughs> Should learn how to speak English. Picking up some of that red. Again, just dropping it here and there. Having a, I just, I feel like it needs just a little bit more red. That's a very rich color. And I know it's a little bit hard to see, obviously, because um, it's getting some reflection from the lights. And then I can see an area over here where I really should have uh, left it a little green, and that's okay. I will go back and I will scrub that out a little bit. Okay. More red. And you'll really see it as it dries too. How that red just makes a nice, deep, rich shadow. Now I'm going with a really small brush. And what I'm gonna do is pick up just a little bit of color and make sure that I allow those colors to pull out and kind of blend into that edge. I'm going to see how well this is going to work. this little shadow area right there. Let's 
Okay, again, just kind of have a nice damp brush. Just softening those edges. Matting water. And then I'm going to leave this alone. Now I'm going to flip it back over. I want to see how dark that dark really looks. I'm going to zoom out. Look at how dark I was able to get that with those three colors. You can really see now how once we start on that this flower and we soften that white and we start adding all those shadows that is just going to really pop right against that that dark shadow and that is just really gonna look good I'm pretty happy with it uh, I'm gonna let that completely dry and then I will make sure that I go in there and get out that little green area that I left and so now I'm going to go ahead and go over to this little area. Look at how it really lightens. It, it's almost like it lightens areas that you've put color into. And I have a little, if you guys haven't seen it, I'll show you a little, it's not so much a value scale, it just shows you um, what happens when you put dark colors next to very light colors. Now, did you see what I did? I took my brush and I just rinsed it. That's hard for you to see. And then I just rubbed it against my paper towel. I just got off some of the water and then I just very lightly softened that edge. I decided as I was going over here that it's just gonna be easier just to get these darker colors and then soften after they dry. But so far so good. Just again, softening that edge. All right, so while those are drying, let me show you that. So hopefully you all have some sort of a value scale. If not, you really should make one. I made this years and years and years ago with Payne's Gray. Um, it's when I was first learning to paint, so Payne's Gray is, you know, it's you can keep it pretty consistent. So what I did was I just created a value scale of zero being the lightest all the way to six being the darkest. And then I punched holes in it so I could hold it up to things to judge the value. I don't really need that anymore, but that really is a good, good thing to use. Again, you just start painting until you get lighter. You start at your zero and then you get a little bit darker and darker and darker till you have a basic value scale. This, what this does is it shows you what happens when you're looking at your painting and you're just not sure why your painting is flat. It's like we were just talking about really building up these values. So 
this is a good example of it. So this is a very, obviously it's a light color. And let's, uh, let's cover the rest of those with a regular sheet. Here we go. Okay. So now when you look at this color, nothing's really standing out. It's like you're thinking, I really need to have a bright, bright white. But honestly, that doesn't look very white compared to this lighter color. But look at what happens when we darken the color around it a little bit. That white starts standing out even more. And again, you added a little bit more color. And now look at how bright that white com looks compared to over here. And finally, look at the difference. And this really is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about how important value is in your painting. Again, you can have a terrible composition. You can pick the wrong colors and not have really good harmony in your painting. But the one thing, the most important thing, is making sure that you have good value. And here you can see, once I started putting in those dark values right there, it's really made these lighter areas, just like on here, it's really making them stand out. So it's huge. Making sure that you can get your values as dark as possible in the darkest areas and as light as you can in other areas will really make a difference in your painting. Um, value is probably, to me, the hardest thing to get right. Because when you're looking at color, you're thinking value. So it's just one of those things that takes a lot of practice. Okay, and I want to apologize for my camera that keeps freezing. I don't, it's not my camera, it's that I'm, it's what I'm using the program to stream into uh, YouTube. Uh, again, when I do my Zoom class next week, that has not been happening with, um, with Zoom and the program I use to stream into Zoom. So I'm, I'm going to work on trying to fix that and see what's going on after today so that doesn't happen tomorrow and Friday. So anyhow, back to this. Uh, that just... That's huge. Value is huge. It, it just, I can't tell you how important it is. So if you're struggling with your painting, I'm, it's going to be value. Okay, so I'm mixing up some more color again. And so now let's, uh, let's come back over here into this area. Let me, I'm twirling my brush to get a nice good point. And I'm actually going to go to that, my two op brush so I can get nice up and close. And I'll just kind of switch back and forth. adding a little bit of water. One thing that's interesting about shadows is if you ever wonder why some shadows seem to have hard edges and some seem to have soft edges, it's because whatever's closest to the object will have the hardest shadows. It's kind of like, almost like a focus thing. And then the farther they are away, the softer they are.
There we go. I just kind of softened that edge a little bit. Now you can really see as we're coming around, this is starting to really take shape. I think what I will have to do is finish up these shadows tomorrow, but we'll still have plenty of time. And uh, why I'm not worried is because there isn't a lot of deep, dark values in here, except for in the center, and so I won't have to keep going over it. I just wet my brush so I could lighten up those little areas right there and pull it back into the needle shadows. And while I'm here, I didn't get these shadows, so let's kind of pull these out with a smaller brush. Okay, and there's a shadow right along there. Okay, going back to my number two, and now I'm going to get this beautiful dark shadow right here. lovely when the other colors don't lift. That makes me so happy. So what I'm doing is taking a little bit of water, just softening up that edge a bit. I think that is looking really good. I am really happy with that, the cactus. Wait until we take off the uh, masking fluid. It is really going to make, um, make that background really stand out. I'm excited about this. And once we get those colors in the center, it's just going to be so beautiful. 
Uh, any questions? I think what I'm going to want to do is stop right here. And, and then in the morning, we'll go ahead and continue. Um, we're going to pull off the masking fluid. And then we'll go around and just get a couple more details in there. But I think it's looking really good. I'm very happy with it. Yeah, I can definitely see where I need to start um, getting a little bit more of the shadows from uh, the cactus needles. In fact, while I'm here, that's really dry right there. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and pull off this needle here so we can see how much brighter that ends up looking. Actually, let me grab my... <laughs> I need my, I forgot to pull out my little uh, rubber pickup. I have had this for probably about 20 years. It's a little bit easier. And you know, the funny thing is too, I have no idea why I masked those needles out that far. That totally did not need that. And there we go, one pulled out. My gosh, and you can already see how much it actually lightened this area right along there. So imagine how it's gonna look when we start adding, um, start adding the colors into those needles. It's just gonna be beautiful. It really is, I'm pretty excited. Okay, so any questions from anybody? Any masking questions? Here, I'm going to zoom that in a little bit so you can see how much different that's going to be once we add the color into those. I think it's just going to look stunning. I kind of want to pull that one off too. In fact, I think it is dry enough. So let's go ahead and pull that one off. So now you look at these values right here. Watch what happens when I pull off this masking fluid. Look at how that brightness really kind of darkened down all of those background areas right there. So, okay, that looks pretty awful right now, but I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna clean up those edges and I'm gonna soften them and we'll make those needles look good. In fact, I think some of those needles are actually, now that I'm looking at it, some of them are shadows. So I'll be turning some of those into shadows. So I could have uh, masked a little bit better, but I was really having a hard time with that new masking fluid I was trying. So anyhow, let's zoom back out. And you can see what it's gonna look like when I take off the masking fluid and we're gonna finish all that up in the morning. And then that way we can start in the flower tomorrow and get the flower finished on Friday. And so let's see what questions we have. Uh, Jean, this is great. I'm loving adding the dark darks. Makes everything look different. After this dries, should we remove the masking fluid for tomorrow? Um, yes, if you want to go ahead and remove it now, uh, I am going to go ahead and go around a few more areas and maybe darken them just a little bit. Not so much darken, but I want to get, you know, some more, uh, some more life into some of these areas. But I think it's pretty much looking really good. One thing I don't want to do is I do not want to have that background compete with this flower. So I don't want to be doing too much detail in it. So once I get those off um, and darken some of those and turn those into shadows, I think it's going to make a huge difference. So, but yes, you can go ahead and remove the masking fluid. And that way, if you want to clean up some of your edges before we get finished, you can do that. Okay, 
Linda says, really looking beautiful with the darkest values. A perfect example of why these values are so important. Absolutely. I will say this over and over again. It's, it's really is about value. If you can learn and understand the difference between value, which is the lightness or darkness of a color and saturation, which is the brightness. Let me pull this back over for a minute, which is the brightness and dullness of a color. Once you really start understanding those two things, you, you will really uh, start to up your painting. You're going to really start seeing your paintings in, uh, they'll start really improving. Okay, so Linda, what's the best way to send you my cactus flower photo? Ah, uh, uh, just send it to my email. That'll work great. And then I'll take a look at it. So if, so I love photos that have a lot of um, a lot of darks and a lot of lights, just like what we've got in this cactus, because that's what really brings out. I, and you know what it is, value to me. If you really want, whatever it is you're painting, if you like realism, that is another way to really make things just really start to stand out and look real. It's that value change. So yeah, there you go. But um, I'm excited for tomorrow. I think, uh, I think it's gonna look really good when we're done. I'm just actually excited to get started on uh, that, that beautiful center flower. It's just gonna be so pretty. And wait till we do all those gorgeous shadows around it. It's just gonna really, it's gonna really come forward. I think it's gonna look great. And if I have to, I'll add another day. You know, I can always add another hour if I have to, but everything uh, that you're watching, in fact, let me, let me switch back to the front now, since we're pretty much done with that. Uh, everything that I'm doing, we are going to also be seeing. So everything that I'm doing, uh, it's going to be as a replay and you will always be able to see it as a replay just like my other ones if you've watched those so um, I think it's going to uh, I, I think it's going to turn out good I'm pretty excited about it I know I had a little bit of a rough start and I've got to figure out why the camera is just stopping again I don't think it's the camera I think it's my program that I'm using so um, I'm going to try to figure that out this afternoon and see what in the heck is going on but uh, until tomorrow, I'm so glad everybody has joined me. And let's see if there's any more questions before I go. And I'm not seeing any more questions, so I'm going to go ahead and sign off. And then I will see you all tomorrow morning at 8. So thanks, everybody. Uh, show me your work. Post it on the Facebook group or the communities group on my website. And I'll take a look. I have to go out for a few hours, uh, but I'll be back shortly. And then if there's anybody needs any help, we can go from there. So thanks so much, everybody, for watching. And I'll see you tomorrow morning.